It was small, heavy, and unassuming. But during the height of the Cold War, this simple heating brick became one of the most trusted survival tools in both NATO bunkers and Soviet outposts. Soldiers swore by it. Pilots carried it in their emergency kits. Arctic researchers relied on it when fuel ran short. Yet most people today have never even heard of it. The Cold War heating brick was more than a source of warmth. It was a symbol of the era's ingenuity, a time when survival technology had to work flawlessly in freezing remote conditions where human endurance met mechanical limits. For those who love real history, not myths or reenactments, this forgotten tool tells us everything about the mindset of a generation living under nuclear threat and enduring extreme environments. Let's explore how this brick worked, why it never froze, and what it can still teach modern survivalists and off-grid enthusiasts today. The Cold War demanded portable heat that could work anywhere. By the late 1940s, both East and West faced a new kind of cold. Not just political tension, but literal cold as military research expanded into polar regions. The Arctic, Siberia, and northern Canada became testing grounds for long-range bombers, radar stations, and early missile systems. Crews stationed there quickly discovered that conventional heat sources – kerosene stoves, chemical packs, even alcohol burners – failed miserably in sub-zero temperatures. What engineers needed was something simple – a heating element that worked without liquid fuel, electricity, or moving parts. It had to be small enough for a soldier to carry, safe enough to use inside a tent or vehicle, and reliable enough to function after weeks of storage in extreme cold. This demand led to the creation of what became known informally as the heating brick, a self-contained thermal block that never froze, never leaked, and could hold heat for hours after activation. The brilliance of the heating brick lay in its phase change material core. Usually a mix of hydrated salts, waxes, or metal alloys that absorbed heat when melted and released it slowly as they solidified. The most common version used sodium acetate trihydrate, the same chemical later found in reusable hand warmers. When heated above its melting point, about 58 Wodekinschicks, 136 degrees, it turned liquid storing a large amount of thermal energy. When triggered to crystallize, often by snapping a small metal disc or introducing a seed crystal, it released that stored heat steadily for several hours. Unlike water, sodium acetate doesn't expand when solidified, and it doesn't lose performance even after dozens of heating cycles. During the Cold War, these bricks were encased in aluminum, or thick steel shells for durability. Once charged, usually by placing them in hot water or near a heat source, they could be carried into freezing environments and activated as needed. Declassified NATO and Warsaw Pact field manuals describe how these heat units were used to warm food rations, dry clothing, or prevent small engines from freezing overnight. Some versions were issued to pilots flying Arctic routes, ensuring survival if they crash-landed far from rescue. During Operation Cold Feet in 1962, an American intelligence mission into an abandoned Soviet drift station, portable heating devices based on this same principle were used to keep delicate equipment and film reels from freezing. Soviet scientists used similar bricks in Arctic research labs and weather outposts, especially during long polar nights when resupply was impossible. Each brick provided three to five hours of steady heat output, often maintaining a surface temperature around 50 to 60 degrees. Two or three units could heat a small enclosed space 
like a tent or cockpit, unlike chemical heat packs that rely on oxidation and therefore need oxygen. These thermal bricks worked perfectly in sealed or low oxygen environments, ideal for submarines, aircraft cabins and underground bunkers. By the 1970s, modified versions appeared in Eastern Europe as reusable household heaters. In areas with unreliable power, people would heat the block in boiling water or near a stove, wrap it in cloth and use it as a bed warmer or travel heater. The principle behind the Cold War heating brick remains relevant today. Modern phase change packs, salt-based heat batteries and off-grid thermal storage systems are direct descendants of this innovation. The same sodium acetate and paraffin compounds are now used in solar heating systems to store excess daytime energy and release it at night. For survivalists and campers, the same idea can be replicated using reusable sodium acetate heat packs. Simply charge them in hot water or near a fire, then activate them by flexing the internal metal disc to trigger crystallization. Wrap them in fabric to warm sleeping bags, boots or small shelters. Each pack provides hours of consistent heat, can be recharged thousands of times and requires no fuel or open flame. In a winter emergency kit, even two of these phase change heaters can mean the difference between discomfort and survival. The military versions of these devices were rugged, field tested and capable of operating at 40 degrees C. Their brilliance lay in their simplicity, no fuel, no fire, no moving parts and no risk of freezing. When people think of the Cold War, they imagine missiles, espionage and propaganda. But beneath all that, engineers were solving real human problems, how to stay warm, alive and functional when everything around you was frozen solid. The heating brick wasn't glamorous, but it was essential. It represents a quiet ingenuity born of necessity, a lesson that still matters to anyone serious about preparedness today. It's also a reminder that many of the survival tools we take for granted, emergency rations, freeze-dried foods, compact stoves and rechargeable heaters were born out of Cold War innovation. The heating brick stands as a forgotten chapter of practical Cold War engineering one that still warms both the hands and the imagination. If you found this deep dive valuable, subscribe to In The Beginning and share this video with others who appreciate real history and forgotten technology.